Hi, welcome to the Dr. J. Bridge Show. My name is Jim Sternberg. I'm the host. This is my co-host, uh, Vicki. What is our talk about this month? This month, Michael Schaefer is back again. You remember he was here last month. He gave us a lot of uh, good uh, bridge pointers. Yes, I learned a lot from him last month. I can't wait to hear what he has to say this month. Me too, so let's get started. In an interview in the bridge world in April 2010, Zia Mahmood, a good friend of mine, was asked what positive behaviors outside of bidding and play skills distinguish one top expert from another? And how could players who are below the expert level profit from improving in these areas? So he said, offhand, I can think of four. First, he said, you should try to conceal your emotions at the table so your opponents don't know when you have a problem. He said, try to observe how the top experts behave when they are declarers. They always appear calm and in control. They never appear to be in trouble. They act like they're playing for overtricks, even when they may be in a contract that has little chance for success, except for a defensive error. But by the time the defense realizes that there's a problem, they've often made that mistake missing the opportunity to defeat the contract. Second, he said, wipe your mental state clean of any of your prior disasters or successes from the previous hand and try to focus on the next hand. Of course, this is easier said than done. After your wonderful partner has just pointed out to you and to everyone else at the table, that you just went down in a coal contract. Yes, thanks a lot, partner. It's not so easy to forget about it or not think about telling your partner what you want him to do. Bob Hammond is without equal in this area and his talent has been caused by his considerable success by being able to forget about the previous hands. But Zia is certainly right. This is critical to your success the next hand is probably more difficult and will need your full attention. Next, he said, handle your partner well. This includes dealing with his quirks by tolerating them or by straightforwardly announcing when something is bothering you. Like, for instance, to stop pointing out you went down in a cold contract so the opponents can smirk at you. Finally, he said, you need to try to create problems for the opponents. Preempt more, be willing to double a little bit more. After all, we all love to play against easy opponents, so don't be one. Make the other side fear playing you, not welcoming it and hoping that you don't skip their table. He was then asked that aside from the above, what advice could he give to a knowledgeable player who wants to see some improved results? So Zia said, you should try to find a style which includes general system approach, depth of understandings, and an at-the-table philosophy that makes you and your partner both feel comfortable and focus your partnership activities on following that style effectively. After all, one of the amazing things about bridge is the large number of different effective ways to approach the game. And it's a virtual certainty that any player can find at least one of these that is personally suitable. This is much more important than choosing a system based on its presumed technical superiority over another. These are certainly good suggestions from all of us from one of the world's best. Last month, we discussed using the Todd bid with only three cards in one or both unbid majors, as long as you have a few extra points. Unless you have a super hand that can bid safely, no matter how the bidding goes, you should never make a Todd with one or two cards in the unbid major. But what about using a takeout double with a five card minor? For example, your right-hand opponent opens one heart and you hold. Would you bid two clubs or double with this hand? 
Double is best since you have three or four card support for the unbid suits. Overcalling a minor suit takes a back seat to finding a major fit. Keeping spades and diamonds in the picture is important enough to suppress the club suit. Let's compare this hand to one where it would be right to bid two clubs. Now hand one was the perfect takeout double. Notice that in hand two, the second hand should overcall two clubs, not double. You have poor spades and much better clubs. There's a huge difference between having the queen ten six of spades and the seven six three. You would not be wrong to double, but don't you think that on a hand two there is a better alternative? Let's compare two other hands. After a two club opening, hand one is nothing to get excited about. Aceless hand should be downgraded, but overcalling a diamond may help partner with the opening lead. And if partner wishes to compete in a major suit, you will not disappoint him with your dummy. With the second hand, it's correct to double. The major suits have improved and the diamond suit is weakened. Let's switch our attention to the majors. Can you make a takeout double with five cards in a major suit? Follow this rule 100% of the time. If you have room to bid your major at the one level, here is the rule. Do not make a takeout double with a five card major unless you have a good enough hand to double and then bid your major. The reason for this rule is very important. You may lose the major suit in the bidding, such as a preempt or a double raise by the opponents. Let's look at an example. After a one diamond opening, how would you bid this hand? Assuming a pass is not an option. Look at the consequences of a double. Partner rates to bid spades or no trump or clubs. In the real world, partner never bids hearts, and if he bids something besides hearts, you'll never be sure you're in the best or correct contract. You should overcall one heart, since doubling would be just awful. Let's show another hand with the same high card points and the same distribution. Your hearts are much weaker. And with good strength in the black suits, it's less clear what to do. Yet an overcall of one heart is best, not a double. Most experts would agree with the overcall. This guideline applies to spades as well. Doubling with five spades can lead to trouble just as easily as doubling with five hearts. What about hands with 5-4 or 4-5 in the majors? Can we double with these hands? First, let's deal with 5 spades and 4 hearts. If your right hand opponent opens a diamond, you should overcall one spade with this hand. It's not a perfect bid, but you'll be able to show your hearts next with a little luck, and partner knows that if you overcall spades and then bid hearts, your shape will always be 5-4, since with 5-5 five, five in a majors, you would have used Michael's Q-bid, which we define here as a 5-5 five, five takeout double. Now let's deal with four spades and five hearts. After a one diamond opening, if you overcall one heart, it won't be easy for you to show spades on a later round. These hands are a headache. Hands with four spades and five hearts are tough. But a double is not an option. At least your major suits are both good ones, so a Michael's cubit of two diamonds is the best option. Let's look at a 4-5 hand where a Michael's Q-bid is not best. After a one diamond opening, the spades are too poor 
to introduce via Michaels. Do not double either since doubling and then showing hearts later promises more. Overcall one heart and hope to make a delayed takeout double. This brings us to our last topic. How strong do you have to be to double and then bid a suit? Everyone agrees that you need a very strong hand, but not all agree on how strong. In general, if you have just one suit to show, you should overcall when you have 17 high card points or less. If you overcall and partner cannot raise, you are unlikely to have a game in your suit. It's when you have 18 high card points or more that you consider doubling as opposed to an overcall. Now we all know that points do not take tricks and all 18 high card point hands are not equal. So let's compare two hands. Hand one, after a one club opening, is a typical minimum double given that you intend to bid spades next. You can envision a game opposite some hands which are too weak to raise a simple one spade overcall. Hand two has the same 18 points, the same shape, but it is by no means equal to hand one. The diamond jack and the club queen may turn into nothing, and that doubleton king, queen, and hearts cost five points just to make only one trick. Overcall one spade with this hand, rightly treating it as less than 18 high card points. The topic of takeout doubles is huge, and we've touched only on some of the more important aspects of this marvelous convention. But as any student, you must do your own research to further your knowledge. Read, watch, and play. This should be your method to learning conventions. We'd like to thank Michael Schaefer for his talk this month. We learned a lot. He was really terrific. I hope you all got a lot of help from all the pointers that he gave us. And stay tuned again next month for some more Bridge information. We'll see you next month. Bye. <laughs>